So when I started making this video, I had a plan for it. It was gonna be a little unboxing of a KitchenAid attachment that I purchased, put it together and make some jam, and it was just gonna be a nice, happy video. But as you guys will see in the footage here, things deteriorated. It turned out that the product that I purchased was somewhat of a fail, and I was really disappointed in the quality and all that. I didn't know if I should still post the video, but I figured if someone else is in the market for a food mill like I was, that maybe this would be a good informative video on what not to purchase. So I hope you enjoy coming along with me on this journey of discovery in the world of generic KitchenAid attachments. So since we're gonna be doing a lot more food processing and preserving on our new property, we have a big apple tree and we have a garden and planning on having bigger gardens in the future, I thought I should invest in a food mill. Since I have a KitchenAid, I wanted to get an attachment that went on to that and so I thought I'd just get the KitchenAid attachment. But in researching it, um, I found that you needed to have two pieces of equipment, the meat grinder and then the food mill goes on to that and I had a food a meat grinder and so I thought great I'll just add the food mill then come to find out they upgraded or changed their meat grinder and so yeah. what you doing um, I have okay so the new food mill that they have doesn't attach to the old meat grinder which is what I had which means I would have had to buy the new meat grinder and the food mill and it was way too expensive, more than I wanted to spend, so I opted to get a generic version. It's the Kitsch Tree brand on Amazon. It had good reviews, so I'm interested to see how it goes. And this one comes with both the meat grinder and the food mill attachment. I think it cost $69.99, so it was an investment. I'm hoping, really hoping it works out, but that's still way cheaper than buying the two items that you have to buy from KitchenAid. So let's do a quick unboxing of this and then I'm gonna see if I can get it assembled onto my KitchenAid. And then I have a bunch of blackberries as well as a bunch of windfall apples that need to be used up. I'm thinking I might try to make some uh, blackberry jam and get it canned so that we can give it as gifts. And then with the apples, we're gonna have so many apples that I just need to do everything possible with apples, probably apple butter, applesauce, maybe some apple pie filling, try to get it all canned. Basically, we'll be able to do whatever it is we wanna do with apples, plus we'll probably have tons more. Little instruction book and a thank you. All right, so there are a lot of pieces here. And this set also came with a sausage filler. Is that what you call it? And that's what these are, where you put your casing on there and you can squeeze the sausage in there. Don't think I'm gonna be using that today. That is the meat grinder. So here are all the pieces all laid out. I am going to wash them, or at least the ones that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna read the instruction sheet here, and um, then we'll see if we can get this assembled together. So up here in front are all the pieces that you need for the food mill. These are extra pieces for meat grinding and sausage making. So you insert this into here, like that. Next, you take the unicorn horn, and let's call this the party hat, and those kind of fit together like this. And um, you can see in here, maybe you can see in here that there's a square in the back, and so it fits onto this shaft. So you gotta get it put in the right way so it goes all the way in. And there's a spring in there, so it kind of presses down and there's little notches on the side. It's supposed to fit down in there by pressing on that um, spring, but you need this piece to hold it in. It just screws on. Just gotta make sure it's aligned correctly, which is a little bit tricky. Okay, you gotta press and turn at the same time and hope that the threads line up. Okay, finally, got it, that is, not easy, maybe I'll figure out a trick. If I do, I'll let you know. Next, this just fits on over the top here and it kind of just settles in. Let's see. All right, I think that's it. I think I got it. And there was one more piece I forgot that I had over in the sink and it goes on top here. I kind of like that it's 
open and clear and you can see the food moving through there. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it doesn't really fit in there. It just kind of pops up. I don't know why it would do that. It seems like it should at least fit down in there like that, but you let go and it pops up and there's a gap right here. I don't know, we'll see how this works. I definitely have to take away points from this for not being user friendly. So I'm trying to get this piece to fit on here and it fits, but this tube is supposed to stick out like half an inch. Otherwise, if stuff is coming out, it's gonna you know, gunk up in here, which you don't want. And it seems like this needs to be twisted to go farther back on here, but it is like locked into place. They do give you this tool that's supposed to help maybe tighten it, but in order to get a grip on it, it's like impossible. <laughs> First of all, so like, I, I can't get it any tighter than that. And then trying to get this off after you've tightened it to death, um, it's very, it's very annoying. So, um, so far, not super happy with this. So I, I guess I'm just going to try it the way it is and hope that the, like the, uh, the seeds and junk that it's getting rid of don't like fall back into the, fall back into here. It just doesn't stick out. It doesn't seem like it sticks out enough to, and it doesn't stick out as, as much as the picture shows. So that's a little bit frustrating. So I guess the only thing to do is give it a try and just see how it goes. Okay, now to get it onto the KitchenAid, loosening this and taking off the cap. And then this fits in here like that. That was pretty easy. And tighten it back up. I think we're all set up and ready to try. I have two of my KitchenAid bowls here because they're pretty tall and I don't want anything shallow that's gonna cause the stuff to splatter. I have the one bowl to catch the juice and the good stuff and one bowl to catch the seeds and pulp here this is the food pusher so it gets used like that i'm going to turn it on to level two So far, so good. All right, so I'm just gonna keep loading and pressing until I get through all of these blackberries. So I'm seeing some juice coming through the threads over here. And I really feel like it's supposed to be um, tighter, but I could not for the life of me get it any tighter. And it definitely will look like someone was murdered in my kitchen when this is all done. I can guarantee that. Here's the very attractive pulp end of the machine. There you go. I'll have to show it to Levi because he'll probably think it's hilarious. So up until right here at the end, we were doing fine, I think because the pulp was really thick, but now that it's kind of thinner, it's gushing out through here and it's 
sliding down underneath and that wouldn't happen if the little tube was sticking out farther. All right, it's done about as much as it's gonna do. So I am gonna add in um, about a half a cup of water and try to just clean it out a little bit. So I wanted to show you this down here also. There's a gap there at the end of the unicorn horn and the um, little spring there isn't compressed I think as much as it could be. And when I took it off to start cleaning it, there was um, juice that went back that direction. And I'm kind of thinking that's not what it's supposed to do. Okay, so the saga continues. I decided to try something. I went and grabbed my KitchenAid brand meat grinder that I told you, remember I told you that I had, I just didn't have the food mill attachment to go with it. And so I attempted to put the food mill attached to this and I think it actually fit better. So it, the pieces are so similar that they work. You can see these are just a little bit different. This is the KitchenAid and this is the, what's it called, Kitch tree. So there are still some threads showing here, but when I look in the top, the spring is completely compressed. It can't go any further. And that's definitely different than with the Kitch tree. Now, I don't know if this will fit since those are a little bit different. Oh, well, no, I, th I think the KitchenAid one might be thicker. I'm not sure. It's just popping off. Oh man, we're so close. Um, let me see if I can try putting this on here instead of this. Okay. Okay, let me look inside. Okay, the spring is completely compressed now. So maybe with this grinder attachment, the KitchenAid one, this will work. So like you saw, I found a way to make this food mill function with my KitchenAid, and it's only because I happen to have that old version of meat grinder. And I went back and forth about just returning the whole thing. I mean, I, I went back and looked at my Amazon and there was a $5 coupon, so it cost me 65, either $64.99 or $65.99. I think $64.99. And so it was not a cheap purchase. And I seriously considered sending it back, but I went and looked at other options and I just couldn't find anything else that looked like what I wanted. And since I did find a way to make it work okay for me with the KitchenAid meat grinder, I decided I'd go ahead and keep it because once I did get the KitchenAid uh, grinder attachment on there. It worked great. I still don't think the pieces fit exactly the way they're supposed to. At the end of the shaft that goes into the meat grinder, there's like this plastic part and um, it has like a seal around the end. It's kind of hard to explain. I'll try to put in a picture here. And I think it's supposed to go in all the way so that the um, like the bigger round plastic part is flush against the end of the um, meat grinder, but it doesn't fit quite right. The end of the plastic part is just too thick and so it like shoves in there, but it shoves in so tight that juice can't go back the other direction like it could with the kitsch tree one. And besides that little part that doesn't seem like it fits exactly correctly, it still functioned beautifully and actually works really well. I've made several batches of applesauce and apple butter with the attachments rigged up the way I have them and it works really great. So as long as it continues to function and doesn't break super quickly, I think I'm gonna be happy with the purchase overall. But of course I cannot recommend this brand or this product to anyone because the only reason it happened to work out for me is because I already had another 
piece that I could add to it. So I would love to hear from you who have used food mills before. If you have a favorite, it doesn't have to be a KitchenAid attachment, um, just any kind of food mill for that kind of thing. I really like the ability to cook apple, like just quarter apples and cook them with the seeds and the skin and then be able to run it through a food, food mill afterwards and not have to worry about peeling and all that. Uh, so if you have a recommendation of a food mill that you like or a KitchenAid attachment, or if you have used the name brand KitchenAid attachment um, and have some insight about that, if it's worth, I think it would have cost me $120 to buy the KitchenAid meat grinder that was the correct updated version plus the food mill that was the updated version and um, that was just more than I wanted to spend. But maybe you have those things and they're just incredible and they're worth the money. A lot of times name brand stuff is expensive because it is the best, not always, but a lot of times. And I definitely am not afraid of investing in something that's actually really good quality. So any insight you have on those things, feel free to leave down in the comments. I would love to read them. I hope you guys are all doing great and I will see you again in another video.